This talk on spinal cord injury will focus on epidemiology and classification. Every eight hours in the UK, someone is told they will never walk again because of spinal cord paralysis. There are 12 specialist spinal cord injury centres covering the UK and Southern Ireland. A report undertaken by the Spinal Injuries Association and published in May 2009 reviewed nine centres in England and Wales and published their data from April 2007 to March 2008. There are a number of interesting findings. A survey undertaken at the same time identified 10% of spinal cord injury patients had not actually been referred and treated under a specialist spinal cord injury centre. And of 744 discharge patients during a 12 month period, 72% were male and 71% of the spinal cord injuries were due to trauma. The breakdown by level is shown on the right at the bottom of the screen. Now in the UK, 42% of traumatic spinal cord injuries are the result of falls, 37% from road traffic collisions and 11.6% from sports. The breakdown here shows the fall from a height, fall from stairs, fall from standing height or jumping injuries uh, and the non-specified. The breakdown from road traffic collisions shows the four or more wheeled vehicles, motorcycles, cyclists and then the smaller number of pedestrians and then the unspecified road traffic collisions. And for the sports breakdown, the diving, rugby and horse riding activities are those most associated with the spinal cord injury. Now the report also focused on the length of admission. If you look at this side, new injuries from the C5 to C8 level accounted for 26% of all their admissions. So the 583 patients who were treated with traumatic new injuries had 151 cases of tetraplegia with some preservation of some upper limb function. And this is of relevance when we think about reconstructive strategies and impact on hand services. This is a slide from a paralysed website and it demonstrates that the four different subtypes of spinal cord paralysis are shown with complete paraplegia, 26%, uh, incomplete paraplegia, showing 21%, a complete tetraplegic injury at 21% and incomplete tetraplegia at 32%. As you can see, an incomplete tetraplegia means there is some preservation of some function in the spinal cord distal to the level of the injury under the terms of this definition. Now the Frankel classification was used in 1969 in this publication. Frankel was working at the Stoke Mandeville Spinal Injuries Rehabilitation Centre. And he came up with a classification system about the grade or severity of spinal cord injury that could be monitored over time. So a complete injury had no sensory or motor function below the level of the, in, uh, the injury. Uh, sensory function below was a B. Uh, Non-functional motor function a C. Useful motor function a D. And a recovery to normal uh, was an E. This has been modified and the American Spinal Injuries Association has an impairment scale. And that impairment scale uses a chart to record motor and sensory function, and also a similar scoring system. So the Asia grade is A complete spinal cord injury, right down to E being normal. In terms of terminology, when we look at cervical spinal cord injury, an injury above C5 is clearly a tetraplegia or a quadriplegia as all four limbs are involved. An injury below T1 is known as a paraplegia, which can be complete or incomplete. But an injury below C5 but above T1 is sometimes termed partial tetraplegia or in incomplete tetraplegia, but these can be confusing because of the Frankel and Asia grading systems where there may be some preservation of function in the legs. So a paper uh, written in 2013 looked at the nomenclature and suggested that brachial diaparesis might be a better uh, designation uh, for the motor deficit in patients with lower cervical cord injury. So paraplegia 
meaning no function in the legs, with brachial diaparesis, meaning weakness in the arms. The network of nerves coming out from the cervical spine form the brachial plexus and above them the cervical plexus. If C5 nerve root is functioning, patients will have preservation of shoulder function and some function within the biceps. When C6 is also functioning, they'll have some preservation of shoulder and elbow flexion and may have some weak wrist extension. And with C7 functioning, there'll be good preservation of shoulder function, elbow flexion, elbow extension, wrist extension, some wrist flexion, and some weak finger extension. And with C8 functioning, there will be good preservation of upper limb function, but finger flexion will be weak and hand intrinsics will be weak. Now prior to 1978, surgeons found it very difficult to uh, compare patients uh, who had tetraplegic cervical spine injury when they were planning reconstruction. And that's because the levels that we know in terms of nerve root injuries, C5, C6, C7, don't always correlate with the best functioning muscle because there's a zone of injury within the spinal cord and different axonal uh, pathways and different degrees of anterior horn cell damage and also differential in motor innovation of key muscles uh, means that some patients uh, with one level spinal injury uh, may actually have better or worse function than was predicted. So in terms of planning surgery and looking at outcomes for audit and research, a group of surgeons got together in Edinburgh in 1978 and came up with the International Classification for Surgery for Hand and Tetraplegia. It dictates that the lowest functional muscle recorded has to have at least MRC grade 4. It's omitted triceps, which is an important functioning muscle uh, to allow positioning of the hand in space for function. It also made comments on sensation, saying less than 10 mm two-point discrimination was known as ocular cutaneous sensation, and sensation more than 10 mm two-point discrimination is just ocular sensation. There was a modification in Guillens in France in 1984 This recognised that there were some exceptions and also the role of triceps. So for instance, here is a sample case of a patient who has the lowest functioning muscle as pronated teres in the forearm. And if they have sensation less than 10 millimetres, they will be oculocutaneous sensation IC4. And then if triceps is working, triceps minus. And that's how the classification is used. Here are some references for further reading. Thank you very much.